talking about five steps to decluttering your home and your mind. So since this is a live recording, I will be taking comments and reading some of those. If you're watching this episode on a playback, just remember that this was a live broadcast in, um, originally. So hello to everyone. This is a little bit different than my normal weekly content, but I wanted to give you something special as we go into spring and address some of your most pressing concerns of how to fix your cluttered home and as a byproduct, how to fix your cluttered mind. I think that we are all tired of overwhelm, distraction, scattered thinking, all those things that come from being what I am in this in the sandwich generation, and you probably are too, taking care of older parents and younger kids and being caught right in the middle. So I wanna help you streamline all of that and make your home a safe, inviting, comfortable place, not a place where you have to confront all those negative emotions, overwhelm, and all of those things. So I am gonna be referring to my notes as I go through. I wanna make sure I remember to say anything. So if you see me look down, that's what this is. Also, my trusty sidekick, Bella, is here in my studio with me, and if she starts jumping, I will make sure and introduce her to you. Now, several of you asked me to do shout outs to your fur babies, and I'm gonna start by giving a shout out. Oh, very good, Shirley wants ideas to store belts in a closet, so we can get to that, Shirley. Um, I wanna give a shout out to the first baby, which is Miyuki, I hope I said that right. Hi, Miyuki, Bella says hi. So one idea for storing belts in a closet. Now this depends on how many belts you have and how often you need to access those. I was able to pare my belts down to just a couple because I don't wear belts a whole lot. And what I did was I went to Walmart and I got an S hook, but you could get an S hook at Walmart. You could get it at a Hi, Pam. I'm so happy you're here too. Um, you could get an S hook even at a hardware store. And that is the easiest method I found for belts because they're not expensive. You could get one per belt if you wanted to, but I store a couple on each S hook and it fits over the bar of your closet and then your belt just hangs on the other side. Okay. Well, th there is a saying in the organizing world, which is clutter attracts clutter. So the good thing about what we're doing, and I'm gonna be revealing this all to you as we go through, and the last step is the one you should do first, so make sure you hang around to the end. The good thing about what we're gonna talk about today, this is my little show and tell, so I hope you appreciate it. <laughs> Our thoughts, S hook, S, <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> she thought I said something else. Um, the good thing about decluttering our homes is that as we get our homes decluttered, our thoughts get decluttered, and it's a cycle that goes through. So anytime we're able to actually make progress with cluttered thoughts <laughs> and make those thoughts a little bit more streamlined, it's gonna have effect on our home and make our home more streamlined, and the opposite is also true. And I'm talking about tiny little changes, like Stephanie finding a way, <laughs> that's okay, that's all right. Finding a way to hang your belts in a way that is attractive and functional for you, that makes a difference. No matter how small your efforts to get organized, it affects your thinking, it clears your thinking, and then you're able to go back and make more changes and simplify your environment, and it just goes, it feeds off of each other. So encourage yourself, if you don't feel like you're, you're where you wanna be with your organizing, just make some small changes and be thinking about small changes you could make today as we're talking. So I'm gonna go through and give you these five steps to decluttering your home and your mind. And the first thing I wanna talk about is, before we get into the first one, I have another shout out. Fur baby cats, Maxine and Sparky, hello to you. I say hello, Bella says hello. I want you to imagine your home, your living area, and it doesn't matter how big or how small, whether you rent or whether you own, we live in an 1,100 square foot home and we rent. We came from a six bedroom home that was four times the size we live in now. So I have totally been through and lived what I'm telling you today. Imagine your living space as a heat map. So if you've ever watched a detective show or a true crime show, 
they use a lot of heat maps to indicate where people congregate. And the areas where there is most life or more people congregating are the hot colors like red and orange. The colors like green, blue, purple are where there are fewer people. So I want you just to think in your mind for a minute, where in your home would that heat map glow red and orange? What rooms are really frequently used? For us, it's the living room, the kitchen, and our main bathroom. Those are the three that would be red or orange in that heat map. So that's the first step. And then I want you to take one of those areas and I want you to pick that room. You too, Pam, right? The living room is really a big deal in our house because that's where we relax, that's where we regroup, right? So I want you to pick one of those rooms and for me in this example, I'm gonna use the living room and that is the only room we're gonna be talking about today because if we're talking about the whole house, it's gonna be a little bit too overwhelming. So let's pick one room. I'm gonna be talking about my living room, but for you it might be your main bathroom, your kitchen, your dining area, it could be anywhere. And put that in your mind. If you're home and you're able to, go into that room now, take the phone with you or the laptop with you or put it on the TV and let me keep you company while you're in that room. And by the way, one thing I love about these lives, they tend to be a little bit longer than my normal content. So if you want me just to keep you company while you're cooking dinner or while you're organizing or while you're cleaning, that's just fine with me. You don't have to pay full attention to this if you want it on in the background. But I'm gonna be talking about my living room and on that heat map, it would be red or orange. We spend a lot of time in that room. Our first step is to identify the space that we're gonna be talking about. Okay, so do you have that in your mind? If you do, comment and tell me what area you want to be talking about today. What one area have you chosen? Once you have that room or that space in mind, I am gonna be talk, giving you a few adjectives, a few describing words, and I want you to choose one or two that describes how you feel now when you're in that space. So when you're in the one space that we identified, what words describe your feelings? These are not words that describe the objects in the room, how the room looks. It's how you feel when you spend time in that place. So listen carefully to these and then tell me which ones you um, identify the most with. Regret, obligation, stress, irritable, judgy, tired, overwhelmed, relaxed, inspired, content, calm, balanced, comfortable, peaceful, affirmed. Okay, I'm gonna read it one more time because I know that's a long list. So now that you kind of know what I'm doing, think about the feeling, the emotion, and hello, Ellie. Um, nice to have you. We're talking about the main room. We want to start organizing and decluttering, and I'm going to be reading a list of adjectives. I want you to pick out one or two words that describe how you feel emotionally when you're in that room. So I'm going to read the list again. Regret, obligation, stress, irritable, judgy, tired, overwhelmed, relaxed, inspired, content, calm, balanced, comfortable, peaceful, affirmed. So when we first downsized from our larger home to the smaller space we live in now, I would sit in my living room and look around and I had way too much stuff in there. I felt totally overwhelmed because I was trying to recreate not just the home we had before, regret, overwhelmed, tired. Yes, I hear you, Pam. Not just the space we had before, but I was trying to recreate that part of my life. So I had been, our house had been the center of everything for our kids. Judgy, Linda, yes. Um, I'm glad you could relate to that. So our home had been the center of our kids, you know, social life, and we did a lot of entertaining. And when we downsized drastically, I tried to fit all my same things in a much smaller space. And I also felt like I needed to maintain all those roles that I had been doing before. 
So I felt judgy. I felt my I felt judging myself. Like why can't you make this work? And I also felt overwhelmed, confused. That's another good one, GJ. I felt overwhelmed by how to make it different. So I dreaded walking in my own front door because I was confronted with all those negative feelings when I came in my own living space. So if you're feeling that way, I do not want that for you. You deserve to have a home that's a wonderful place for you to spend time in, okay? So our second same, right Pam? Our second step is going to be identifying how we want to feel in the space. So now that we've identified how we currently feel in the space, let's identify how we really want to feel. And I'm gonna read only the positive um, descriptors to you now. Relaxed, inspired, content, calm, balanced, comfortable, peaceful, affirmed. Okay, I'm gonna read those one more time and I want you to choose one or two of those that describes how you want to feel in this particular room. Okay, it is relaxed, inspired, content, calm, balanced, comfortable, peaceful, and affirmed. Relaxed and peaceful, right Pam? So I wanted to feel affirmed. I wanted to feel affirmed in this stage of my life. I wanted to know that I was still important in my family and I wanted to be affirmed that I had taken on new roles in this stage of my life. And I want you to really, really focus on that feeling because that's gonna motivate everything you do. And it's not just a matter of having the right organizing containers or systems. You all know that I talk a lot about that on my channel and we can talk all day about the best containers and systems to buy and do, but we all know the hard work is making those decisions to move forward and get past the clutter. So get a really clear idea in your mind of how you feel now and how you really want to feel. And that's gonna be your motivator to take the next steps of action. Okay, so once you have this firmly in your mind, um, the first step is to, I'm sorry. Okay, so what I'm going to go back. This part of our process is really extremely powerful, and I'll tell you why. And I shed a content and calm, Linda says, perfect. I shed a lot of tears over this, and you may need to shed some tears too, because decluttering my home involved a lot of letting go letting go of the roles I used to have, letting go of the things that reminded me of when my kids were little and remembering that that was not my stage of life anymore. And also a lot of discovery, a lot of time figuring out, well, who am I now? What do I wanna do? How do I wanna spend my time? But the third part of that was the most important and that was recognizing that I was worth having this kind of home. I was worth having a home I felt content and calm in. And that's gonna mean a lot of different things for different people. For me, it meant I needed to get rid of things that were no longer a part of my role anymore. I needed to say no to certain hobbies that were cluttering my space and I didn't really have time for or enjoy. There were a lot of clothes that I needed to get rid of that no longer fit me. And I had to continue to tell myself I am worth this. I am worth feeling great in my home. And I wanna tell you that today. You are worth this process. It may be tough and it may require some time and some energy. For me, it took several years. I hope it's quicker for you. That's why I'm here to help make this a little quicker, less painful situation. But you are definitely worth it, all right? So I want you to embrace that today. All right, so I want to illustrate this by sharing a story of when I was in grade school and I was about seven and I loved school. I loved school, but I did not like going to recess. I didn't like going to the playground. So let me know if that was you. Were you like the kind that couldn't wait to get out of class and go to the playground? 
I was the kind that liked to read my books. I liked to stare out the window and imagine my future and do those types of things. But when I went to the playground, there was one activity that I especially was afraid of and avoided, and that was jump roping. So I'm not talking about the kind of jump rope that you do yourself, you know, like this. I had no problem with that. Tell me if you remember, or if I'm dating myself, going to the playground and having those giant, they were probably 10 foot long jump ropes, and there was someone at each end twisting it. Sometimes it was a teacher, an adult, student, and then all the kids were jumping in and taking their turns, and they would jump in and they would jump out, sometimes two or three at a time. Well, I felt very uncoordinated. I felt very awkward. I was not sure of myself. And when it came time for me to jump in, more often than not, I would get the rope tangled in my feet. I would stop the whole process because, you know, I just wasn't confident enough. Hi, Elle. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Check out Elle's channel, Elle Naturally, if you haven't already. She does some great reviews of makeup for women over 40, and I'm so glad you're here today, Elle. We met through a class that we took together. So I was mortally afraid of jumping in to this little jump rope exercise. So let me know if you are there with me, if you had a fear of different athletic things. <laughs> but I once had a friend that helped me with a little trick overcome this fear of jumping in to that jump rope game. And she said, first of all, I'm going to come alongside you. We're going to do it together. And secondly, she said, I want you to say this in your head. I in spells in. Now, there's nothing magical about that, right? I in spells in. But there were two things that made it work. The first was she was catching the rhythm of that rope. I in spells in. And the second was, hey, Kathy. Yes, yes. Um, thank you for coming today, Kathy. So the first was catching the rhythm of the rope, and the second was that there was something propelling me to take action. So once I said that little rhyme, I in spells in, I had to jump in, all right? And so that's what I want to do for you today. I want to come alongside you in something that may be overwhelming to you and something that may seem impossible or fearful or you're just like a deer in the headlights about. And I want to say that to you. I in spells in. Let's do it together. Okay? So tell me if you can relate to that. Um, all right. So maybe you feel paralyzed by, you know, conquering this room. Maybe you feel paralyzed by what I said about, you know, feeling worthy of having this space or feeling like you deserve to have an uncluttered space. Or maybe you have other things that are really scary to you. And I want to give you some tips next to help you see this in a different light. So now we're going to number three. We started with identifying which room we're going to start in. Then how do we want to feel in that room? And then the third tip is become the CEO of that room. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you've ever had a job where you were up for a yearly performance review, you'll relate to this example. So I've had those in my job. And, you know, most of us are probably thinking on the yearly performance review, I know that I deserve a raise and I can prove it. But that doesn't always happen, right? We don't always get that raise. I want you to be the CEO of the room you identified. Thanks, Sal. Um, you get to hire you get to promote, you get to demote, and you get to fire every single object in that room when they come up for your review. So let's say in my living room, let me tell you a few of the things that I fired, which meant I either sold, donated them, or I consolidated them and got rid of a lot of the extraneous things. One of those was big boxes of family photo albums. Now, some of those I gave to my kids, some of those I realized I really didn't need, and I just kept very few. That's for me. The second thing I fired and I got completely out of my house was any clothes that did not fit me anymore. Now, I know that this is a hot button because a lot of people are saying, well, that's a waste. If I lose weight, I'll get back in them. But I wanna give you permission to fire those clothes from your closet 
because you're going to be simplifying. You're going to be simplifying your wardrobe. You'll actually wear the clothes that you have more. But also, if you do lose weight, guess what? You get to reward yourself with one or two new wardrobe items. You won't be feeling constantly like, oh, well, I should fit in those, but I don't. So that's another thing that I get got rid of. A third thing that I want to encourage you to fire as the CEO of your home is any object in the room you've chosen that brings painful memories. Now, why would you keep something that brings painful memories? Well, sometimes it's out of duty. Sometimes it's a family heirloom or a picture. Maybe it doesn't even signify anything huge, but when we look at it, we feel like, oh, that wasn't especially good time in my life, or I don't really like the way I look in that picture. I gave you permission to fire that object. It's not really helping you as CEO of, of your house or of your room. Some things that got demoted, which means I took them out of that central place and either put them in storage or made them smaller, were out of season clothing and outerwear. Now we lived in, at the time, we lived in a climate where there were four distinct seasons. And I learned how to use layers instead of multiple coats and multiple scarves, hats, gloves to keep warm. So that eliminated having multiples of all those things and keeping them in a very small coat closet. I was able to demote the ones that weren't in season and store them in the attic or in a storage unit, and then I could do that. Hello, my whimsical friends, Teresa, nice to meet you. I hope you're having a great day in San Diego where it's nice and sunny. So there are some things like this that you need to demote. Another thing you may need to demote is family heirlooms. For me, this was costume jewelry. Some of that someday I wanna to give to my kids or grandkids, but I don't need it in my everyday closet. Okay, so I can pack that up and store it nicely, the things that I really know I wanna pass down, and I can store it in an attic or another space that's safe. So those things needed to be demoted. Now, you may not be thinking about the side of it, but there are actually a lot of objects you probably need to promote. These are things that you may not be giving yourself the, the permission to include in this room. For me, one of those was fresh plants and flowers. If you saw a few episodes back when I redid my studio, I bought this little plant and I would usually just go to a discount store, um, get under your kitchen sink. Yes, your kitchen sink, that's very important. I would usually just go to like a Lowe's or, or Home Depot or somewhere and buy a plant that I thought was nice. But for this plant, I actually went to a specialty plant store. I told them what kind of lighting was in my room and I asked them to help me find a plant that would thrive in this environment. And it has. And you know, I spent a little bit more on it, but I was okay with that because I really had decided I wanted to promote plants and fresh flowers in my surroundings to make me feel affirmed because that was the emotion I was going for. Another thing that I promoted was scents. So I had had candles before, but I invested in this diffuser from Walmart. And I love this guy because it's got multiple light settings. It's got this little iridescent color and it just makes me feel great when I see it. And I love to kind of experiment with the um, these Guru Nanda essential oils that I get from Walmart. And those are both linked below if you're interested in those. Another thing I promoted was artwork. So this is actually a picture that my daughter made for me for Mother's Day when she was, I think it was second grade. Yes, Teresa loves her real plants. And it's about, it's just about mothers and about, um, it's about, you know, different things in nature. And I love this, but I realized I was hardly ever looking at it because I had it in a box. So I framed it and I put it next to my laundry area where I can see it all the time. And I love that I promoted this object. So I want you to think about that. You know, what's keeping you from feeling those things that you wanted to feel? And how can you use things to, you know, promote that in your area? And you may find that you want to, you know, cut back on some other items so you can spend a little more on things that you really want, okay? So remember, only objects that match this feeling are allowed to stay. You're the CEO, 
you hire, fire, promote, and you get to say what stays and what leaves. You have all the power in this company. There is no board of directors. So before I go on, I want to say um, shout out to fur baby Mighty Mouse. I don't know if this is a, what kind of fur baby this is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but the next tip, yes, um, the next tip is choose quality over quantity. So what do I mean by this? If you saw my last um, episode on my YouTube channel, you know that I just overhauled my mother-in-law's pantry and I gave you all a lot of ideas for my favorite organizers from Walmart. My mother-in-law had a giant, oh sure, you can take it, but wait till I get, you can take a screenshot, but wait till I get to the end, unless you just want these three. You're, I'm, I'm fine with that. If you want to um, take screenshots, you're welcome to do that. Uh, my mother-in-law had a giant ladder in that little pantry, and it took up almost the whole footprint of that, that pantry. We decided, so it was very awkward for her, and it was even a little bit unsafe because she was climbing up on it to get to some top things. So we took that out, and I replaced it with a step stool, took some of those things off the top shelf, and put them down lower. So it was able to actually serve the same purpose, but really work better in that environment. Bella's barking at something like usual. I don't know if you all can hear her. So replace quality, quantity with quality. And that may mean that you have to save up for a little bit to get something that really works in your environment. And it may mean that you can give yourself permission not to just get the cheapest thing. It may mean that if you need to replace your toaster, you're really looking at all the toasters and saying, okay, not only which one works the best, but which one do I love looking at? And that kind of blends in with my kitchen. So those are the things I'm talking about, choosing quality over quantity. And guess what? We can have a lot of things that are kind of cheap looking and break and all of that, and that just adds to the clutter. So anything we get have that in mind, choosing quality over quantity. So having said that, my channel is now getting closer to 90,000 subscribers. I cannot believe that. And I want to give you all a giant, giant thank you for that. But my goal is to get to 100,000. That's my next goal on YouTube. So if you love the channel, but you just have forgotten to subscribe, please subscribe or recommend it to someone you think would love it. Thank you. Thank you, Al. I told myself that when I get to 100,000, first of all, I'm giving some things away to all of you because you made it possible. So when we get closer to that, I'll start announcing that. But second of all, I am getting myself, yes, you spend a little bit more, but it lasts longer. And so I'm getting myself some Uggs house slippers. Now, do I absolutely need those? No, I do not. But I know that that is gonna signify quality to me. It's gonna be a celebration of that milestone for me. And furthermore, I've used Uggs. I know how well they are made. And that might be the last pair of house slippers I buy. It's gonna take the place of three or four cheaply made house slippers. So that's what I'm talking about. Really think about not only being the CEO of your environment, but choosing quality over quantity. Okay, so before I get to the last point, which is really the first thing that you should do, I wanna let you know all the places you can find me if you want even more ideas. You all know that I'm here on YouTube, at Shannon Skip To My Life. That's also my handle on Instagram. I do a lot of Bella updates on Instagram. I do um, a lot of announcements of, you know, what's coming up in future episodes. Oh, thank you so much, Teresa. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. I really appreciate that. Um, so if you like Instagram, you use Instagram, there are a lot of ideas there. My handle is at Shannon Skip to my life. And then I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook page. So if you like Facebook, that is a great place to meet up. I'm also on a store called Like to Know It, LTK for short. And on that store, I feature a lot of 
capsule wardrobe ideas for women over 40 that are not expensive. A lot of them come from Walmart, and I show you how to take separate pieces and make them work, to work together so you can really streamline your wardrobe and streamline your look in your closet. So if that's what you like, there is a link to that below. The other two things you can do is join my weekly, oh, thank you, Pam, I really appreciate that. You can join my weekly email newsletter by clicking on the link in the description box. That will actually get you 14 pages of free household label labels that you can use all over your house, but you'll also be signed up to get my weekly email newsletter. And that's where I really tell you a lot of the behind the scenes, what's going on, what to expect, what's coming up. And you can respond to that by email and let me know what you need, what your questions are, specific things that you're wanting to know. And then lastly, if you want more content that you're doing that like similar to what we're doing today, where I take you room by room and I give you specific tips and hints, I give you um, all kinds of printables and handouts and accountability, you'll want to join my Downsize and Organize membership. It's $10 a month for level one, and you'll see the link to that below as well. And this next, this month coming up, we're going to be doing our kitchens together. So if that's something you really want to do, make sure to sign up. And you can come in and out whenever you want, just like the jump roping. If you want to join for a couple months and then it served its purpose, you can unjoin and just get what you need out of it. That's what it's designed to do. Okay, so that's where you'll find me. So let's recap. We know that when we declutter our homes, we declutter our minds. When we declutter our minds, we declutter our homes. It all works together. Even small steps make a big difference. We start by identifying one space, thank you, Teresa, that we wanna work on. Then we identify how we want to feel in that space. And everything we do, every decision we make goes back to this. Then we become the CEO of that space. We hire, fire, promote, demote every object in that space. And then we keep in mind that we're gonna be choosing quality over quantity. The last step, and this is the one I want you to do today, right now, before we get off this live, make friends with imperfection. How many of you are like me and put off organizing and decluttering because you think it has to look perfect when you're done? Let me know. You have some Pinterest perfect picture in your mind and anything short of that is going to be failure to you. So let me tell you, oh, Pam says that's her. Let me tell you where that starts from. Generally, it starts from comparison. It starts from comparing ourselves to someone else. And guess what? It may not even be someone you know. It may be someone like me. It may be an influencer. It may be someone that you have no idea what their life is really like, and they're never gonna see your home. So why are we holding ourselves to that standard of perfection? We don't have to. We're free to, to do whatever we want and not compare ourselves to anyone else. And I wanna tell you a little secret about my content. Some people think that because I teach people how to organize their homes for a living, my house is always perfect. And I have to tell you, it is not. So my goal is that if I found out you were coming over to visit me today, I could have everything straight and looking presentable within 20 minutes. So I know that I could do that. I've worked towards that goal over years by eliminating the clutter and making it so easy to keep straight. Okay, so not only is perfection a result of comparison to people we don't even know, but it can also cause us to spend a lot of money that we don't need to. Yeah, and Pam says her started with her mom, everything its place. And you know, we're not our moms. We don't live in the same era that our moms did. Oh, I'm so glad you got some inspiration, Teresa. That's what I'm here for. We're not living in the era our moms lived in, and we don't have the same situation our moms did. So we're free as our own women, as our own people, to make decisions about how our homes should look and feel and operate, right? And I give you that permission today. 
But the second thing is perfection can cause us to waste a lot of money. And let me tell you, there are a lot of people marketing containers to you that are very expensive. And that's because they are playing on this sense of perfection. That only, if only you buy the right container or the right system, your house will automatically be decluttered and organized. Now we know if we think about it, that's not true. There's no magic wand, but we buy into this whole concept. And so um, let's not do that. That's a result of imperfection, of, of holding ourselves to the standard of perfection. I'll tell you the third thing that perfection did for me, which was actually the most damaging when I stepped back to look at it, Having an attitude of perfection caused me to blame the people I lived with. It caused me to say, my house is too big. My house is too small. If only my husband would put things back where I had them. If only my kids would help me clean, it would be different. So those types of things can actually harm our relationships with the people we love most. And usually they come out of perfectionism. And usually they keep us sidelined from really dealing with things that we're able to deal with for our own business before we start pointing fingers at other people. So this is what embracing perfection may mean for you. It may mean getting started with the time, the space, and the situation you have right now. Not thinking, well, in a year I'm going to move, so then I'll do it. Or, you know, when my kids move out of the house, then I'll do it. Or anything like that. Okay? It means getting started today and accepting the time, the space, and the situation you have right now. Embracing imperfection may mean giving up 30 minutes of your favorite TV show to organize your sock drawer. Right? Right? I mean, we do have time, most of us. It's just that we want to spend the time doing something more fun. So it may mean saying to yourself, I need to give up that 30 minutes of watching my favorite show and organize my sock drawer. Not as fun, but that's my priority because I want to feel like this when I open that sock drawer. It may mean not blaming your partner or someone you live with for a messy bathroom but instead, keeping an organized space set apart for yourself, for your own mental health, and letting them do their thing, right? It may mean simplifying an area that you've let become way too overwhelming and have too many things in and getting rid of some of those things. And it may mean sacrificing something like fast food for a week so you can actually get rid of some of your old clothes and get some things you really love. So those are the kinds of things I'm talking about concretely when I say making friends with imperfection. Here's my definition of an organized home. It, it's three components. The first is that it is visually relaxing. So if you're in the room that we talked about and we identified and you don't feel relaxed, you've got a little bit of work to do. The second, definition of an organized home is it functions with ease. And mainly by that, I mean, you don't have to climb over something to get what you need. You don't have to file through things to find out if you have them. You don't have lots of duplicates. You don't uh, wonder, well, I know I bought that a year ago, but where is it? That's what I mean by functions with ease. And the third element to a really organized home is it inspires greatness. It's not just a place where you lay your head at night. It's not just a container for your stuff. It's actually the laboratory for your visions, your goals, your dreams. It makes you feel affirmed. You feel comfortable. You feel relaxed. You feel like you can take on the world because of the special place on earth that is your home. So those are my goals for you. And I want to close by telling you that you deserve to have a home like the one we just talked about. Whether or not you feel like you deserve it, I'm telling you, you deserve it. Um, it is, wor you are worthy of having that and you can have it. But it may take some sacrifice and it may take a little bit of work on your part. 
So I hope that you have taken one of the ideas we talked about today and you're ready to put it into practice. If you need to rewatch this live, it's going to be on replay. You can rewatch it as many times as you need to or just kind of binge watch my content in the background while you're doing your thing. And I also want to give you a sneak peek. Next week's video is going to be all about Dollar Tree organizing, um, Dollar Tree organizers you'll use every single day. I made up this little basket for my mother-in-law. She's a gardener, as you may know. And it's got all kinds of fun things for gardening. It's got some prayer cards, a trowel, it has um, some gloves in there, and it has some other things that you know you need when you garden. And these are all Dollar Tree things. So if you need um, some ideas for a little Easter basket or a birthday basket, that is um, something that you can do. And let me tell you, I was gonna say this at the beginning of this live. I had an accident with this eye, and that's why it's bloodshot, if you've noticed that during this live. I was gonna say that at the beginning, and I forgot. I was exercising and I strained myself and I popped a blood vessel. There's nothing wrong. It's good, um, but, but it's just healing. So with all that said, I'm going to end by telling you I in spells in. We're all going to get in this together and I want to hear about your progress and what, what room you chose to start on and what feeling you want to feel in that space. And until next time, this is Shannon from Skip to My Life. Remember, today is not the end of your story.